Rebecca and hope you're all well. Welcome back. I I am filming this late in the day. It's already dark so I brought in some uh, lighting. I hope it's not too theatrical <laughs> for you um, but yeah trying to work with the darkness. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of the library um, footage um, from earlier today. It was really fun um, to go to that big, to the main library branch, uh, which I'd never been to before, and so cool to see um, all the resources that they had beyond just books. Libraries are so cool, such an important part um, of our community. In the theme of libraries, I wanted to make a video um, inspired by Julie um, of The Linen Librarian. I wanted to do my take on the challenge, the reading challenge that she created called Blurb Telephone. Um, Julie posted a video called Let's Play Blurb Telephone last year and um, I'll, I'll link her video below. But basically, you read one book and then the following book that you read um, should come from another author that either blurbed the previous book or wrote an introduction or afterward or something for, for the book um, previous. Um, and then you continue on like that. So it's inspired by the game of telephone. And um, yeah, I thought it was such a cool idea when I first saw the video and I really wanted to try it for myself. So let's go through the books that I got um, and then I will uh, record um, once I'm done reading them. The first book that I have is um, The Woman Who Borrowed Memories um, by Tova Johnson. Tova Johnson is a Finnish author um, Swedish-speaking Finnish author um, who she she's the one that who created the children's comic and novel series the the Moomins um, if you're familiar with that but she also wrote um, several adult fiction novels as well as um, short stories she was also a painter and illustrator just a really um, renaissance woman of her work, I have previously read The Summer Book, which is probably her most like famous of her adult fiction. 
and um, it's one of my favorite books. I I think she's she was such a cool person, um, such a brilliant artist and a creative person in general, and so I'd love to read more of her. I bought the copy of um, The Woman Who Borrowed Memories um, at a bookstore last year, and it's just a um, NYRB collection um, of selected stories, so I think the stories in this book come from one, two, three, four, five um, previous works, um, previous short story collections, and they're all compiled in this one. Um, I'm actually almost finished reading this. So I started this um, earlier on and noticed that the introduction was done by Lauren Groff, and I own a copy of Matrix by Lauren Groff. So that's what I wanted to go to next. Now, um, Lauren Groff wrote the introduction, so not technically the blurb, but I will read a little portion of what Lauren had to say about this collection. So um, I just wanted to read, oh my gosh, Let's use my lamp here. Okay. We read Tova Johnson to remember that to be human is dangerous, but also breathtaking, beautiful. I think that speaks very true to um, what I'm getting out of this collection. And also, let's talk about this cute um, photo on the front. That's the author swimming in front of her adorable, beautiful island home. So I love that. Also, Midsommar vibes in that flower crown. Fun. Okay, so the next book in my blurb telephone series will be Matrix by Lauren Groff. Here's the cover that I have. I I think I have read one short story by Lauren Groff. And I don't even think I've read it. I think I listened to one of her short stories being read on the New Yorker Fiction Podcast. I think. I don't know what it was called. I just have, that's my association. Um, and I think I was kind of indifferent or um, or felt some ambiguity towards it. Um, so <laughs> essentially, let's assume I've never read Lauren Groff. So we're coming into her very fresh um, but I, I'm intrigued by the premise of Matrix because I think it has to do, it's, um, I think that it's a historical fiction premise about a woman in a convent in France, I think. Um, convent life um, and like sisterhood stories are fascinating and interesting to me. Um, and just, she seems, I don't know. This book, I believe, has been getting um, a lot of praise, and it seems interesting to me. So I, I'm excited. I'm really interested to actually give this one a try and give Lauren Groff a fair, fair try. Um, she had quite a few, um, quite a few, uh, blurbs of praise and acknowledgement here in the intro. Um, and so my goal at the library today was to choose a book by um, um, someone who blurbed her. I ended up getting a book by Sarah Waters, who I'm also interested to read. So Sarah Waters said of Matrix, um, an audacious piece of storytelling, full of passion, wisdom, and magic. Great praise. That brings me to my final book selection, because I'm only going to do three. 
um, for this series, but the final book I picked up was by Sarah Waters, and it's The Little Stranger. I've never read this, and I've never read Sarah Waters, um, but I know of her because I saw the movie, the Korean film, um, The Handmaiden, a few years back, and was obsessed. I'm still obsessed. It's so good, but I know that is based off Fingersmith, which is written by Sarah Waters, so I've just been wanting to read her. They didn't have Fingersmith at the library, so we'll start with a little, The Little Stranger. Um, I don't know much about the plot except for um, I think it's like maybe horror-ish, definitely gothic. Um, yeah. So I'll just read those three books and then I will come back and I am fascinated to see the through line from a book of short stories about various different people, kind of haunting, melancholic undertones to this um, convent life, historical fiction, to what looks like a gothic potential mystery story so that should be interesting if i were to go on the blurb on the little stranger is um interestingly enough by stephen king so that would have been a strange way to wrap this um series up so i think i think stopping with Sarah Waters is a good place for now, but that's where I would continue on from. Yeah, that's it. All right, so the first book I read for this challenge was The Woman Who Borrowed Memories um, by Tova Jansen. Again, I had started reading this already at the beginning of my um, uh, at, when I at first started recording for this video, um, but having finished it, I can say I really did enjoy this collection. The stories within are intimate. As a reader, you get to look into kind of the intimate, small, internal um, spaces of the characters, and the characters themselves also have a very intimate relationship with their surroundings and in their environment. Uh, there's a strong sense of place. In one story, uh, a woman living alone, isolated on an island, um, uh, discovers a squirrel has somehow made it to her island. In that story, we watch this character try to create a relationship with this squirrel um, and the modification she does to her island and her house in order to make it like habitable um, for the squirrel. There's another story in which a man starts building a miniature house inside his own home um, like obsessively uh, it felt like that the vibe of the story reminded me of the movie Synecdoche, New York. This very like meta uh, creation of a artificial representation of, of a home. And uh, yeah, that one was great and trippy and weird and loved it. And there's another story that I also felt had a strong sense of location and place in which this woman travels to Spain hoping to meet with a friend and she ends up becoming uh, really involved with kind of the social drama and dynamics of this community that she's staying with. The intimacy um, of the stories and the way they were told at times some of them would feel claustrophobic. Jansen has these kind of creates these claustrophobic environments um, and as a reader you're very aware of, of the protagonist of the story and um, how they feel about their situation and what's going on around them. She writes her characters 
with this air or this sense of detachment. She's unsentimental and more matter-of-fact about her characters and how they behave. Um, but yet you still, as a reader, I feel get such a sense of the richness and the depth of the characters, although there's this like kind of stark view of them. Um, for example, I'll read a section from uh, the squirrel story. Um, the next day, she decided not to get up at all. It was a dreary and excellent decision. She thought no further than this. I will never again get up. It was a day with rain, a quiet, steady rain that might continue for days. That's good. I like rain. Curtains and draperies of rain, endless infinities of rain going on and on, pattering, wrestling and pattering across the roof. Today is honorably and simply gray, an anonymous, timeless day that doesn't count. Jansen's characters are witty and observant and smart. Um, she writes children also very distinctively. Her children are very, are written very gloomy and uh, with like a sense of melancholy. Um, near the end of the collection, there are a few stories that um, I believe are somewhat autobiographical, um, inspired by letters that she wrote to friends or letters that she received from fans to have a glimpse into her life through letters or abstractions of her, her letter writing was really fascinating. Overall, she is an incredible writer. Um, I absolutely want to read more from her and would highly, highly recommend Jansen to anyone. I think she's accessible yet like brilliant and smart and um, has some wonderful thoughts. The next book I read was Matrix by Lauren Groff. This is a tale of medieval Christianity. It follows our character Marie de France who is um, inspired by a real person um, we don't know, like, not much is known about Marie de France. All that is known is that she was a poet, and Groff uh, uses her as the jumping off point for this character. In Lauren Groff's imagining of Marie, she is this, like, bastard child um, with royal blood that uh, kind of grows up in Eleanor of Aquitaine's court. Queen Eleanor then uh, sends Marie off to a abbey um, to work there with the other nuns. Throughout the story, Marie is able to wield her power uh, to build the prosperity of the abbey and also empower the other women there. And ultimately, she attempts to create like this utopian society of women at the abbey. I. I think Lauren Groff has a beautiful use of language. I wrote in my notes, the language was lyrical, atmospheric, intentional, rich, witty, and smart. Um, I found the dialogue interesting. Uh, it was more woven in through the story rather than like breaking for chunks of dialogue or discussion. There's strong storytelling in this book. There's magic and mysticism sense of place and location is important in this story. I could connect that with uh, the previous collection. There's this clear sense of um, the Abbey being almost a character in itself as Marie nurtures and um, makes it this commune and society and um, magnificent place for the women she stewards to live. The story or this book spans a long period of time um, as opposed to kind of the intimate uh, vignettes of the short story collection. Um, Matrix spans 
um, Marie's lifetime, basically the first section we see her as a young woman um, leaving the court, joining the Abbey, um, and she's kind of in a state of denial. And then the second section, it jumps through several decades of her really coming into her own um, and, and becoming the abbess. This is the period where we see Marie's power um, grow and she is becoming a leader. She's putting in hard work and she's gaining power and, and authority. In the final third section, this, this covers the last decades of Marie's life. It's a period of reflection and kind of ultimate clarity um, for Marie as she looks back on her life. This clips along is in a very like modern contemporary novel um, format. I did like that Lauren Groff, she would weave in like medieval words and unfamiliar vocabulary. Made me want to listen to Joanna Newsom or something. Matrix itself is a word not commonly used in the sense that it is in this book. It has several meanings, one of like the womb and another of uh, how you seal a letter. You can hear uh, more about the words and the language used in Matrix on this great interview with Lauren Groff on the um, Literary Life podcast. I'll try to link that below as well. Um, I thought it was a great interview with her, really fascinating. Like I said, the scope of this novel is quite broad and less um, intimate than the collection of short stories, but uh, you still get a good sense for the character, I feel, um, as opposed to these internal um, intimate monologues or internal thinking of our character. We instead, as a reader, see the character develop through the actions she takes and how um, she interacts with the other characters and her environment. Um, it's written in third person present tense, which is a tricky um, format. It's maybe less intimate, but it worked for me because of how um, how much this story spans. And finally, just to uh, hone in that sense of place that's so um, important. And I think the biggest theme that I that I took away from drawing a through line um, of these three books, I want to read just one more example of how the setting of the Abbey was so important um, and such a um, distinct part of this book. Um, I'll be reading from a scene in which Marie has um, started menopause and uh, cannot cool down during a hot flash. So she runs outside. The pond of the abbey is dark, matte. The night is moonless. The feel of the abbey on its hill at the back, hunched and half watching in its sleep. Heat still rising from the soil. The frogs thumping their drums. Some chirping bug in its millions. Some single night bird with its few notes. Her body is inhabited, electric with heat. Her skin has a roiling fire stuffed into it. The heat is unbearable. She is now running toward the low light off the water. Night in its heaps of darkness spins by. Yeah. Ultimately, I really enjoyed reading this. It was fast paced and um, engrossing. Just a fun, a really fun read. And I liked the character a lot. All right, finally, let's talk about The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. This story is set in post-war England. Um, 
and it follows a main character named Dr. Faraday. Dr. Faraday is um, caring for the Ayers family who um, own this estate called Hundreds Hall and uh, Faraday becomes intimately involved with this family. As the house itself starts to crumble into demise, um, the family starts to experience these horrific um, events. As the events occur, Dr. Faraday's involvement um, with the family increases. My first impressions of reading this book, I was reminded of um, watching Downton Abbey um, and also of reading The Remains of the Day. Because of general themes of class and like the modernization of England and um, the structure within these like estate homes of those who work in the home and the, the family that lives there. Overall, the reading experience reminded me of um, what it was like reading The Secret History, which I read for the first time a few years ago. Um, and I was reminded of that experience because of the atmospheric, looming mystery that kind of propels you through the novel. There are also a lot of character relationship dynamics that are central and important to the story, as well as an outsider narrative. So this Dr. Faraday, he narrates the story, it's from his POV. The story consists of either his interactions um, with the family members or his recounting of what they've told him about the events that have happened. So the story is about this family through this outsider um, looking in and wanting to be a part and be involved with them, but it's his observations and his interpretation uh, that is the, the vehicle for, for the plot. In the story, things occur in the house to the heirs family, and um, they're unexplainable. Um, the family who is living through these events feels strongly that there's something supernatural happening or that the house is trying to communicate with them. And um, Dr. Faraday, as a man of medicine and science, tries to rationalize what's going on and try to explain um, what he thinks is going on through his uh, rational, logical knowledge and inclinations. Overall, I actually found some of this book very terrifying. I think that there's some like really scary um, scenes sprinkled throughout. I felt like it was scariest when um, we first, the, you know, when, when what was going on was really unknown and new. Um, there's this psychological horror element. Um, the description, there's descriptions of objects being moved um, by an unseen force that was vivid and terrifying and it was a compulsive uh, fast-paced read. I was racing through it because I wanted to see what happened next and um, that the element of mystery was really strong. So it was a really fun read, um, very atmospheric. Um, the most different in terms of themes, I feel, from Matrix and um, The Woman Who Borrowed Memories. I think there is definitely some like uh, contemplation of human nature um, and the supernatural and the soul and how we um, explain the unexplainable. 
as humans. Um, I also think that there's a character, um, Caroline, she's, she's one of the, uh, she's the daughter of the Ayers family. She reminded me, in a sense, of Marie from Matrix because she's just this strong, independent, industrious woman. And I really loved that character. And I think um, it was important that there was a dynamic between her and this um, doctor who uh, is a man because there's this element of, of her striving to be believed. Um, and to be heard and feeling stifled um, that I found really interesting. And there's definitely that theme um, in Matrix. I think uh, you, can, you can really, I mean, those are just gonna be themes um, with historical fiction where you really see uh, patriarchal and uh, male domination. Um, pervasive in the norms of the society that's that's being depicted. Um, and again, because it is a gothic novel, there is this strong sense of place in the home itself. The house, the estate is almost a character in the story. Um, and, and I really loved um, how it was depicted. This house changes in appearance um, over time. It is getting more and more run down as the story pervades. But Dr. Faraday um, sees it differently at different times in the book. Um, he grows up in this country town, and so as a child, his memory is different from it coming back to it as an adult and as a guest and also as part of this family. I want to read from the beginning of the story where we see um, the difference between the house um, that Faraday sees as a child and then upon returning as an adult. Um, at the beginning of the book, Dr. Faraday describes Hundreds Hall um, from his perspective of seeing it as a child. He said, I recall most vividly the house itself, which struck me as an absolute mansion. I remember its lovely aging details, the worn red brick, the cockled window glass, the weathered sandstone edgings. They made it look blurred and slightly uncertain, like an ice, I thought, just beginning to melt in the sun. Dr. Faraday returns to the home um, but this time as an adult, and this is the first time he's seeing it since he was a child. The house was smaller than in memory, of course, not quite the mansion I'd been recalling, but I'd been expecting that. What horrified me were the signs of decay. Sections of the lovely weathered edgings seemed to have fallen completely away, so that the house's uncertain Georgian outline was even more tentative than before. Ivy had spread, then patchily died, and hung like tangled rat's tail hair. The steps leading up to the broad front door were cracked, with weeds growing lushly up through the seams. I think that's um, all I really want to say about The Little Stranger, because it's um, so plot heavy and um, a mystery. Uh, you kind of or I don't want to. I don't want to speak too much about it. But um, if any of that sounded intriguing to you, and you like uh, kind of that gothic horror genre, I think this was a great, entertaining read. It was very, very fun. I enjoyed reading it. And overall, I really enjoyed this exercise. I thought this challenge of um, reading from one blurb to the next was really fun. And obviously these books aren't, weren't meant to be read together, but I did find it interesting trying to think of the other books um, and the author's um, intentions as I read, uh, read the three of these in, in sequence. Um, 
yeah, I would do it again. What a lovely challenge. I just would encourage anyone else who's uh, curious about trying it to, to give it a go. I think it's, it's a fun way to pick your next book and try to link themes through three very different types of books. It was really great. So that's all. Um, I hope you had fun and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.